Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. We start with a breaking news alert. The Moorhead Police Department is looking for a missing teenager. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jordan Schreer. Authorities want your help in finding 13-year-old Joshua Newmayer. He is described as about 5 foot 7, brown hair, brown eyes. His picture's up on your screen. He was reported as a runaway on September 25th and is expected to still be in the Fargo-Moorhead area. Anyone with information about him is urged to call the Red River Dispatch Center, and that number is up on your screen right now. New for you at noon, the Wadena County Sheriff's Office is warning the public about a high-risk sex offender that will soon call that area home. 28-year-old Luma Sakila Patterson will be released into the community on October 24th. Authorities say he approached a random woman in public and forced her to another location where he raped her. Patterson will be living in the 150,000 block of 129th Avenue. Taking that live look outside right now, it's a sight we have grown way too accustomed to in the valley. Gray skies, some rain out there for some folks. To see what we can expect for the rest of our day, let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Well, sad to say more of the same today. We've got the cloud cover hanging around here on our radar and satellite map. You can also see those rain showers dropping down as this little clipper continues to work its way through. And there are places where we're seeing a little bit more steady rain. Crookston, some light rain falling there, stretching back through Mayville and into uh, places like Steele County and, and Lake Ashtabula north of Valley City. Fargo finally getting a break after what felt like uh, what was a couple of hours of light rain impacting us. And this is going to be the case today. We're going to see off and on rain showers rolling through the valley. We have had some accumulations here. This is our radar estimated rainfall. And you can see there are some pockets where there was rain for some time hanging out over the Hunter area. We're looking at an estimation of about an inch there, maybe less than that. But it gives you an idea that we've seen more rain that we don't need. We've got those flood warnings in green up and down the main stem Red River and in some of the tributaries too and also some some of those fields filled with water as well. So continuing to deal with wet conditions here in the valley. We'll have more on when we might dry out coming up in your extended planner. All right. Thank you, Lisa. And she mentioned it. Our recent wet weather is causing the Red River to rise, and that has forced the Third Street to shut down in Moorhead. Flooded basements have also been reported because of the rain and snow in the metro. In Grand Forks, people are still cleaning up from the storm and are urged to limit unnecessary water use. The city says its sanitary sewer system is straining to keep up. And that storm on Friday forced the North Dakota Highway Patrol to close some major roadways in the state, as we reported, but not every driver listened. The NDHP handed out citations to eight drivers traveling on those closed roads. Both interstates and Highway 2 were shut down on Friday because of the dangerous driving conditions. The citation will cost those drivers who drove past those gates about $250. We have new information this afternoon on the serious vaping-related illnesses that are being diagnosed across the nation. The North Dakota Department of Health has confirmed three more cases have been reported in the state in just the past week. The department says the cases were reported in northeast North Dakota. Symptoms include cough, fatigue, dizziness, headache, vomiting and diarrhea, chest pain and difficulty breathing. In total, the department has received seven confirmed cases, five probable and three suspected reports. One man is facing charges after a snowball fight took a bizarre and dangerous turn. A criminal affidavit says 68-year-old Gordon Van Hassel of Douglas, North Dakota, attacked a 9-year-old boy and knocked him unconscious after being hit by a snowball. The victim told police he and some friends were throwing snowballs at each other near the church in Douglas when one of the snowballs was launched at Van Hassel as he walked his dog nearby. Van Hassel allegedly ran toward the boy, punched him into a truck, knocked him to the ground, and then repeatedly kicked him. Deputies say Van Hassel admitted to knocking the boy to the ground and claimed the kids were harassing him and throwing rocks and snowballs at him and his dog. The former Texas police officer accused of shooting and killing a woman inside her own home is now facing a murder charge. That deadly encounter was all captured on police body camera. 
Gabe Gutierrez is in Fort Worth with the latest. Former Fort Worth police officer Aaron Dean is charged with murder after body camera video showed him opening fire on a woman inside her own home. Aaron Dean. Dean, seen here graduating from the police academy last year, abruptly resigned Monday morning before he could be fired. The city's mayor even apologized. It's unacceptable. There is nothing that could justify what happened on Saturday morning. Nothing. That's when police say Officer Dean shot and killed 28-year-old Tatiana Jefferson after a concerned neighbor had called a non-emergency number because her front door was open. In the body cam video, Dean never identified himself as a police officer as he walked around outside of the home shining a flashlight. He approached a side window and opened fire. Put your hands up. Show me your hands. Hi, my name is Tatiana Jefferson. Tatiana was a graduate of Xavier University in Louisiana. She wasn't being violent. She wasn't being against the rules. She's a law-abiding citizen. She was in her house. Ashley Carr is her oldest sister. Jefferson's family is now demanding the Fort Worth Police Department change what they call a brutal culture of policing. We need to send a message to law enforcement officers around the country that there will be accountability when you take someone's life, particularly in their home. The police chief here says he's reaching out to the FBI about potentially launching a civil rights investigation. So far, former Officer Dean has not responded to any requests for comment. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, Fort Worth, Texas. The woman involved in the shooting was the fourth person Fort Worth police have fired upon in the past 10 days. In our consumer alert this afternoon, we now know why Taco Bell recalled more than 2 million pounds of its seasoned ground beef. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says the product may have been contaminated with metal shavings. Three complaints were filed with the USDA last week. There have been no confirmed reports of bad reactions from eating that beef. Taco Bell says it pulled the potentially contaminated product.